Hey hockey fans, welcome to Goal Line Hockey. And today we are going to take a look at the potential buyout candidates in the NHL for this summer. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe. Okay, so big contracts get signed. One year down, maybe doesn't look so good. Two years down, really doesn't look good. Uh-oh, there's still another two or three years left on the deal. What do you do? A lot of GMs will buy out those contracts. So, starting off this list, I went alphabetically, not, you know, 10 to 1 or anything like that. Um, starting us off, I looked at the Buffalo Sabres and Kyle Oposo, a guy that, he was a New York Islander. I was really upset when he left back at the time, but looking back, it probably was for the better. Unfortunately, he's had health issues um, recently. He's been able, unable to stay in the lineup, and it's really hurt Kyle Posa. He's making six million for the next four years, so it would be a big buyout. Maybe not a candidate so much for this summer, but maybe next summer, um, Kyle Posa could be bought out. And with the cap room that Buffalo is trying to make, there is a possibility that this could work. Um, you know, like I said, Skinner needs to be re-signed, you know, some of the contracts start getting made, and they're looking to make moves this summer, so, um, if Ristolani gets moved, are they, who are they going to bring back in, how are they going to add to the depth of this organization, so, you need capital for that, so, making cap space, you know, as little as it could be right now for Oposo, if Buffalo is desperate enough. To re-sign a guy like Jeff Skinner, maybe they do it. The next guy, we're heading to Carolina, and this has been talked about a lot recently, is Scott Darling uh, to be bought out by the Carolina Hurricanes. He's making $4.15 million for the next two seasons, so that's that's a little that makes a little bit more sense. Usually they try and do these buyouts on one- or two-year deals, and there's a perfect one right here. Uh, Scott Darling has... Basically, he's become the third or fourth goaltender at this point. Actually, the fourth. Um, I would put Mrazek, McElhenney ahead of him, which obviously they did in the playoffs. And Alex Nedeljkovic, I would put him ahead of um, of Scott Darling at this point. He's got that. Nedeljkovic has the American Hockey League team in the Calder Cup Finals. So, I would easily put him ahead of Scott Darling. Where's... Scott Darling goes from here. I'm not sure, but he's gonna either. He's been again. It's another guy where he's been injured a lot. So if he can get healthy, start to get back on a little bit more of a groove, staying healthy and things like that. If not, he's gonna find himself in Europe uh, as soon as next season. The next guy I got on this list is the Columbus Blue Jackets, and that is Brandon Dubinsky. Now it depends on what the Blue Jackets look like. Heading into this summer, if they lose Panarin, Duchesne, Bobrovsky, uh, Dzingel, you go down the list. All the guys they could possibly lose this summer. If they decide to go in a rebuild, you know, start to rebuild the organization up a little bit, you keep Dubinsky and that cap hit. He's making 5.5 or 5.85, excuse me, for the next two years. So that's a little bit of money uh, for a guy that really didn't play for the Blue Jackets. Um, they still may buy him out either way, just for the fact that he can find a new fresh start somewhere. So we'll have to see what happens there with Dubinsky. But with where Columbus is going, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up staying another year. Uh, now we head to Edmonton. So now that Ken Holland is in there, I don't think he'd be afraid to make a move like this, buying out one of the players that Peter Shirelli signed. And one of those guys being Andre Sakara. He's making $5.5 million. For the next two years, he just has not put up the numbers. He's not a great NHL defenseman at this point. He's a good mentor, but um, I, I don't think he's a great player. Now, there have been rumors that Sakara will stick around with the Edmonton Oilers. I I find that a little bit weird to say by Ken Holland. Um, I don't know. He needs cap space for this Oilers team if they're going to get any better. And, and dropping a guy like Sakara would really help that. Um. And next, the Los Angeles Kings, we got Dion Phaneuf. So, 
He's making seven million for the next two years. He has that. He had that really, really big contract that he signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lou Lamarillo traded it to Ottawa. Ottawa has since traded it to the Los Angeles Kings. So, uh, for enough, he's kind of every season. Just you can tell his game is. He's got the size. He's a big guy, but he's an extremely slow skater. And with today's NHL being so fast and skilled, he's starting to fall back. Uh, you know, and he's he's just not. He's falling back in the prehistoric period. He's just not the player for today's NHL. He was great in the early two thousands, but at this point, with the way the NHL game is changing so rapidly, it's a tough league for 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 enough to keep. Um, to keep a job in the NHL. Victor Rask from Minnesota is my next guy on this list. Minnesota needs to clear out some cap room. They were rumored to be looking to trade out Jason Zucker as a contract. So if they are really in, I mean, we heard that they were trying to get Phil Kessel. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So you wonder if maybe they try and make room for a free agent over the summer or they look to make a trade and they could use a guy like Victor Rask maybe. Um, to clear out some cap space with with a buyout. So we'll have to see what happens there with Victor Rask. The New York Rangers have a couple of guys, and I narrowed it down to one. Uh, Brendan Smith, $4.35 million for the next two years. He looked awful for the New York Rangers this season, and uh, I hate to be critical of guys, but Brendan Smith did not look good for the, for the New York Rangers uh, through a lot of this season, and he's just, again, the Rangers' D is getting younger, and if they bring in a guy like Carlson, that's a lot of money to be spending on your blue line for it to not be all that well. So, Rangers got to figure out what they're going to do. They have guys like Stahl and, and Shattenkirk as well that are pretty, pretty rough contracts for the Rangers, but we'll see what happens. Um... So now we move on to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I got Eric Branson, the guy they just got at the trade deadline uh, last season for Tanner Pearson. That was an awful trade. I'm sorry. Tanner Pearson's actually a pretty good player, and he played well in Vancouver. Eric Branson, you can't say the same thing. And again, Pittsburgh's looking to make room for, you know, to bring, bring some young guys into the lineup, and Gabranson's anchoring that defense. I remember I went to one of the games and he was a real problem for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's just very slow and he just he's good for Crosby, but how much does Crosby really have to defend himself at this point? It's kind of ridiculous. Uh Good Branson is an awful contract. Uh good you know, Jack Johnson is another one, but that's for another five years. They aren't gonna buy that out for another two or three years. So oof. Things in Pittsburgh uh look pretty rough. And a good Branson contract uh, where he's making $4 million isn't going to help that. Okay, so now to Vancouver. Um, Louis Erickson, another three years, he's making $6 million. So he's still got some time on that contract. There were rumors that they were going to buy him out, maybe try and trade him for Milan Lucic this summer. Who cares at this point? They're both making the same amount. They're both pretty, pretty rough players at this point. So um, why not? Uh, I would say Erickson's a better player than Lucic, but I don't know. You know, Lucic is from Vancouver. Back when he signed with the Edmonton Oilers, he said he would never go back to Vancouver. Well, maybe that maybe times have changed since then. So, um, Washington has Matt Niskanen making five point seven five for the next two years. That's an easy contract. I think they'd buy out. We saw them buy out Brooks Olympic last summer. I think this year it will be Niskanen. So we'll see what happens there with Washington. They lost in the first round after winning the Stanley Cup. They're right up at the cap ceiling. they got to figure out what they're going to do there in Washington. And then to close out this list, the Winnipeg Jets, who are going to be very active this summer, have to make some cap room for guys like Line, Ehlers, and Connor. And Matthew Perot has to be the guy to get out or bought out in Winnipeg. He's making 4.125 for the next two years. That's way too much money for a third, fourth line guy uh, at best at this point. That team has gotten so good in Winnipeg, he doesn't fit in the top six. 
and he's a depth role player making way too much money for the Winnipeg Jets. So tell me, who are some guys on this list that you agree with uh, being bought out? Or tell me some other names that you think may be bought out this summer. So thank you for watching us here at Goal Line Hockey. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.